Today we're going to continue our discussion about round numbers and stop hunts. This is an important video that you don't want to miss. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Thank you again for all the feedback, the questions, a lot of positive feedback. Uh, I hope that it's getting giving value to a lot of you traders that maybe have been not been able to get the consistency. I'm hoping this is filling in some of the, the, the missing uh, holes in your trading. There's a, a, a gap even when you're conceptualizing this now and getting little bits of the information, there's a gap between executing this in live time and even though you know it, you see it, there's still you know the built-in fear, hesitation, all those things, but you just have to be confident that you make that subtle incremental improvement every single day, every single week. Today I hope to clarify some stuff around the 25 pip stop hunts, the round numbers, and the importance of understanding that and hopefully that will just fill in some, some missing uh, information. I know some people have emailed me a lot of different stuff about that, but just focus on executing, putting your stop in, putting a target in, and not getting shaken out of the market. Let the market do its work. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Trade, trade on a demo, trade on a micro lot, whatever it is, until you can hardwire yourself and see this clearer and clearer and clearer. We talk about the four simple things, trading off the high and the low of the day. We're going to clarify a couple of things about that as well. Then also we talk about focusing around a 12 candle window around the equity opens, the hour before, the hour of the open, and the hour after. That is our prime area for the strike zones for the market to do its work and allow us to enter in piggybacking on their movements. And number three, round numbers the importance of round numbers and then 25 pip increments around those round numbers and what they represent to us and what we should be looking for as they come out of the Asian range based on that high and low and what it's done in that session. Then we talked about the template, the weekly template. Uh, we're going to review a couple things today about that template because there's some interesting stuff evolving on the pairs. And then, and then we talk about stepping back and just being focused on the process and executing those trades and focusing on risk reward. So the whole idea is obviously to be targeting three, four, five, maybe 10 times your risk on some of these trades. But one of the things I wanna to clarify today is the round numbers and what these 25 pip increments can mean to us in relation to these round numbers when we have our Asian high and low. I want you to constantly be thinking that you're trading inside of whether it's a 50 pip box or a 100 pip box. This is the real box. The round numbers is the real box. You might be trading between 0 and 75 down here. Okay? There's two scenarios with that. You're either going to get a sell high off the double zeros or you're in a 25 pip stop hunt to 75 back through above the double zeros. This market could be trading around zero and you may get a 25 pip stop hunt down to 75 at which point you get a candle pattern that gives us uh, uh, an engulfment pattern, a pin bar hammer for the move back up. Now you may be down here at 75 or 80 or 85 and that market may may go up to double zeros and all of a sudden we get a trade signal up high and we've misread this and you're thinking oh I, I still think it's going up but the market's telling us that it could possibly be selling maybe it's come down from here and been trading through here before it came down and the market is actually selling off you still have time if that market was to drop down and give an engulfment pattern back inside below the double zeros inside the upper part of that lower 100 pip box for you to either be at break even or cut the trade. If this trade was going to go up, it would push up through that box and break into the next double zero level. So if we have an Asian range, for example, that's trading between 75 and 25, around 50, the market as Europe opens may come up to that 75 level. 
gives us a bowl candle, but on the next candle, it gives us an engulfment candle. Okay, and we're going to talk about some different patterns with the engulfment candles. It may give us an engulfment candle at 9.30 or 9.15 or 9.45. What's important about this is a couple of things. That's a 25 pip stop hunt on top of the 50. So traders that have just blindly entered in at numbers or algorithms that have entered in at numbers, that's a 25 pip stop hunt on traders that might have shorted that right at 50. That engulfment pattern has shifted the market and what should happen is it should pop down below 50 in the next one or two candles. If that market was going to continue, if this was a breakout, which is a different scenario altogether, that market would, br would break through on the next candle in the opposite direction. But again, we're talking about trading from the high and the low of the day. The market had already given us a high and a low. This is a stop hunt on the high of the day and a reversal pattern for the move back down at least to the low of the day or to the numbers where again we could get the same scenario where the market may reverse off the numbers. But this closing below the 50 is confirmation that the market potentially now is going to trade at least back for a 25 pip stop hunt below if not right through to the double zeros. Now there's some other things with these moves. If the market is trending, if you're in a trade and it starts to go down, understand that once it breaks through a 25 pip increment level, it may not go all the way down to double zeros. It may come back to this level to stop hunt traders that have entered in around the 75 level on smaller time frames or who have entered in late chasing this move down. So they'll do a 25 pip, 20 to 25 pip move back up before rolling back down to the double zeros. They might go down right through the double zeros and again come down and hit 75. The concept I want you to understand is that we want to focus around the round numbers. Does that mean that you can't you could get filled up near 75 for a sell or at 25 for a long? Absolutely. Around off of those levels. But what I'm suggesting is that the move itself when you're targeting your profit, where you're looking for this trade to potentially maybe fail out, if the market was to come down and then without touching the zeros, paint a tail, that may be a sign that your trade is nearing the end of its move, depending on how the next couple candles trade out. But what's important is that we focus on these round numbers. The trade might be zero to zero. The trade might be 50 to zero. It might be 50 to 75 but we're targeting 25 pips above or below for our strike zones in terms of entering in the box, which is the, the real box is the numbers. And again, you can get an idea based on your Asia high low. Now, in some situations, the market may move up uh, right off the bat uh, 50 pips and go straight up. 25 pips stop on above double zeros and pull back inside. We saw that this morning on the pound New Zealand. Okay, That's a stop hunt on traders who are either sh short from the previous session or from the previous sessions over the previous few days. And then they've pulled it, they've done a 25 pip stop hunt above the double zeros and then pulled it back inside. Now that, that market could auction back down and go sideways. This could therefore be a peak formation. If you get a peak formation and you're really confident that that is definitely a peak formation and the market is staying below that or above if it was down here, do not counter trend the peak formation. That market is highly likely to move aggressively in the direction opposite the peak formation. If you counter trend that, you could get caught holding in the wrong direction for a move against you. Now some of the candle patterns we're going to just talk about. Again, high and low of the day. It might be on a stop hunt. It might be on an extended move at the end of uh, uh, a London move or a US move. But ideally you'll see tails on a short up top or on a long down below. It may be a combination of a cluster of candles. But when we're at the low of the day, we're looking for tails again either at numbers or at the quarter level for a stop hunt 
It might be a three bar combination, whether it's long or short. It could be an engulfment pattern. At the high and the low of the week, you'll often see a two bar reversal when the high or the low of the week are broken. Other interday, if you're inside of a high and low of the week, interday highs and lows, we would probably want to see a combination of this together because to take that blindly, you could be trading counter trend into a trend. But at the high and the low of the week, we can look for these engulfments coming off of numbers below or at round numbers, below or above 25 pips, below or above round numbers or at round numbers themselves as potential reversal points. This is not an engulfment. A huge candle off of numbers, usually about 20 pips in either direction, that candle may be one of two things. That could be a stop hunt for, for a final leg, a final blow off move. So the market's come down 25 or 50 pips, it's gone sideways, and then bang, in one candle it drops 25 more pips. That is highly likely to be the end of the move. If this is at the beginning of a move, that is more than likely the first mouse. So you've heard the expression, the second mouse gets the cheese. Traders will get in chasing this move. They get in, but then of course the market will come back and either just stop hunt the gap or come back to the high to give a second move down with one of these patterns. Do not chase large candles. They are designed to trap you into chasing momentum. There is one other scenario when you will see this. The market at the higher low of the week may have a big M or W formation. They will often drop below that, usually in Asia or the beginning of Europe, and then work back underneath in three pushes into that level, and on that third push will shift in one big candle, trapping this volume, and then gradually sideways before it resumes its move down, usually for 50 pips or more depending on where we're at in that high and low of the week. The same thing applies for the W formation off the low. You will see that on a third level when the market shifts on a 15 minute chart after trapping three legs into that move. And again, this will come with a bit of experience, but that usually occurs at the high of the week or the low of the week. The other scenario that you'll sometimes see is on three pushes to, it could be three pushes to a high um, or three pushes to a low. Or if we see a big move come down and consolidate going into the US session, we might see a stop hunt candle on a third push inside this consolidation. We're talking over three hours into the US open, then a small inside bar where the market resumes its move down. Same thing would apply. Um, the market may come off of a low consolidate on a, uh, and then consolidate into the US Open. Bang, one big bear candle pin stop hunting the low of this range with a little inside bar before it resumes the measured move up. This is typically seen after a move off of a peak formation in London and then we see that on the last hour heading into the US Open. It can occur anytime. The point I'm trying to make here today and you know, if you're seeing this, you're already, I've already received a ton of emails about the numbers. People are definitely seeing this. But to clarify a bit more, these 25 incre pip increments can be a stop hunt zone above 100 or 50 pip box or below 100 or 50 pip box for the move long. So you'll often see either the market trade off the numbers, whether it's for the long or for the short, or you'll see them go through or be trading in a 25 pip box as a stop hunt area for the move back inside of the real box, whether it's 50 or 100. Think plus or minus 25 pips from the round numbers. Let the market tell you where it's going. So you may see the market stop hunt high and you're thinking you're going to get in at 25, but then in one candle it shifts back down and you're getting filled somewhere close to the double zeros. That's okay. You got a one bar stop. The market's given us a candle confirmation or a price reversal that it's trapped traders up top and it's reversing now for the move back down and vice versa. Are you going to get every single trade right? No. You're going to make mistakes. But if you can grasp this concept, you're going to start to see as you get better and better 
at mapping this out with those, those four areas and then nailing these, these patterns and then riding them out for the maximum amount out of the move, 50, 75, 100 pips or more, you can afford to lose 18 or 20 pips on your losing trades. If you're, going, if you're getting better at this and you're using smaller time frames, you can get those stops maybe down to 10 or 12 pips for a 100, 150 or 200 pip move. You can, you can get stopped out and it's not a big deal because your next trade wipes out that loss by three or four times. So we're gonna go look through some, some examples today, but the big concept I really want you to keep focusing on are round numbers, the real box, and then plus or minus 25 pips above or below these strike zones. And that will, that will tie in some of your other um, analysis. You know, we've had a, uh, on, on, we talked about the weekly templates, and you know, I wanna, we're gonna go through some examples, but it's important to see even when we have three days of drop, that the market has actually been painting highs inside of that drop zone and it's, today will be interesting to see if we roll over and retest the low of the week or if the market actually comes back for a measured move up to continue the long move from last night's lows. So hopefully you're getting value from all these traders. Again, keep the questions coming. Hopefully you're getting a lot of value out of this. Focus on the numbers, plus or minus 25. And just in closing, think that if our strike zones are these box numbers, double zeros and fifties, we want to be selling up high or coming off of a stop hunt high or the stop hunt low for the move long or the move short. We want to be outside of the range and if it's a trend, the market will already be moving from these numbers. Okay, let's take a look at some charts. Okay, traders, uh, we're going to look at some examples now. Just continuing our discussion about identifying our round numbers and then the 25 pip increments above and below or below the round numbers that could be our potential strike zones as we come into our 12 candle windows. Now obviously uh, there's going to be s trades that happen outside of our 12 candle windows. Most importantly uh, those opportunities will most likely occur usually when you're at the high or low of the week but the same principles apply. If we just scroll back through the week, and I'll encourage you to do the same on your own time with your own charts. One of the reasons that this simplifies things is that I, I don't have to have a lot of analysis paralysis. I know uh, other people like to use moving averages and, and different scenarios, different technical indicators. I, I think for myself, the problem with that is that, you know, when you add in extra variables, it also potentially can impair your decision making in live time with making a decision. I have candle patterns at certain times at the high or near the higher low of the day based on number levels and the way that the market behaves for me to either enter into a move high or low back to the other side of the range or to continue a move with an existing trend. So we'll just review a couple of pairs throughout the week to see how this would have played out. The market went above the 50 level. This is uh, Friday on the, the G odd. So the market's moved up 200 pips. Okay, so we see that we redraw our highs and our lows. We know that the market coming into the Europe Open has come back off of a 25 pip stop hunt or move above the double, uh, above 50, back inside at the close of Asia and moves down 75 pips, 25 pips below the double zeros as we head into the London Open. But at that 25 pip increment, we see a tail go into the lower 25 pip box, not all the way down to the 50 but slightly down the next candle has a, a, a tail on the upward part of that 25 pip box below the double zeros but on the last candle of the London hour the opening hour of London the last candle again so in your mind conceptualize the last candle of an hour when that closes that hourly candle will close with in this particular case a pin bar because the open was down, the first two candles went down, but that fourth candle engulfed, it's a three bar engulfment, back at the double zeros 
after a 25 pip stop hunt below the range, actually a bit more than 25. But that little pin tells us that they've gone down into the lower box. We take a look over to the left and we see that there's traders potentially that have gone long earlier. But my point is this, they went 25 pips below the double zeros and then gave an engulfment candle at the end of the London hour back at double zeros for a long trade with a one bar stop targeting at least to the high of the day. And that market went right through the high of the day and gave us a 100 pip box of movement. And then on top of that, again, you'll notice it went 25 pips above the double zeros before closing back inside. And then on the next candle, going into the seven o'clock stop on hour, a, a hammer with a tail, a bear hammer with a tail after the 25 pip stop hunt below the double zeros. So again, just thinking in simple terms, you know, when the markets come down into the US Open and then, and then put a tail up top, these tails often represent stop hunts where they clear out all the orders. They cleared out the traders who were short up here that didn't take any money off the table. So they're up 75 pips. They haven't taken profit. Three candles later, the market comes up and stops them out, either with a loss or a break even. The next candle goes up and pins the top again, which is a 25 pip stop hunt above the double zeros, stops out the high of the day, pulls back and closes down in the lower quadrant. Traders would, would have said, well, how do you take a trade like that? Well, I wouldn't take that trade, but no matter what, when you take a trade like this, if they've done the stop on high, chances of them returning back up into that upper box are slim. But with a gap like this between the close and the higher tail, uh, I'm, I'd be reluctant because you're chasing a, a almost a hundred pip candle. Well, it is a hundred pip candle, which obviously must have been news related. But a candle like that, why, why even trade that? You don't even need to. There was 50 to 75 pips on a normal trade, and there's a hundred pips over here. Go to bed and get some sleep. Next day, the market has opened on a gap, gone up high, 25 pips above. The 50 pip increment a 50 pip box notice the stop on is 50 pips and then it closes back inside of the numbers with a bear hammer and a tail up top it drops down into the lower 100 pip box works itself up into the lower part of the of the double zero so it goes underneath into the numbers with a 25 pip almost a 25 pip pin stop on up top consolidates engulfment for the short trade down to the lower part of the box. Now coming into our session, we see the market move back up above the medium price, which is 50, goes above the 25 pip box with a tail into the upper part of the box to stop hunt traders who shorted the engulfment candle before pulling down. And then into the end of Asia, goes up 25 pips again before rolling over and giving us an engulfment that closed below the 50 pip increment box. So we're back inside the lower 50 pip box. We have a one bar stop. The market retests the gap. Stop hunts traders who have gotten in down at the close, as opposed to traders who may have shorted this on smaller time frames, before dropping through into the next lower box to stop hunt the low of the day. And it continued for a measured move down. The point I'm trying to make here is that this increment above and below the numbers. So if we were, they've gone 25 above, but they've stayed below the double zeros. They've gone to the bottom of the box. They've gone above the halfway point, stop hunted into the upper part of the box, dropped it down, and then went up to the 25 pip increment above the numbers before rolling over with an engulfment. Into the US session, they went 25 pips below the double zeros before pulling back in the stop hunt hour, coming down into the US Open. We talked about a stop hunt candle versus an engulfment. This is an example of a stop hunt candle. The market stop hunts traders that have been short up here before dropping down and giving us our engulfment inside of the numbers. So we've already gone below the, the 20, 25 pips below, pulled back inside of the 100 pip box. We get an engulfment. We expect that the next place this trade should go to is to retest the upper part of that box through the high of the day, which it did. Again, market opens. 
something I wanted to point out from the Monday game peak formation, the market was trading up into the peak formation, but not going back all the way up, just into the numbers. The market gave us a peak formation again on Asia, and it went 50 pips above the double zeros in this case, but, but as you see, it traded into the numbers, into the lower 50 pip box, up to 50 stop hunt candle. Again, that's not an engulfment, that's a stop hunt candle, and in this case, a 50 pip candle. The market then goes back up, pins the high before dropping down into the lower box. Traders that have chased the large candle have sat in this for two hours, and it's only gone 25 pips. If you're in a trade for two hours and it's only gone 25 pips, you have to be looking at closing that trade, either a break even with a small loss or with a small profit. But after two hours, if the market has not moved through to, well, in this particular case, it touched the low of the day, but it didn't break through. The market then came up to do a 25 pip stop hunt above the numbers before pulling back immediately, going sideways, 25 pips below the double zeros before shifting down below into the next 50 pip box and then pulling back and stop hunting 25 pips above the 50 pip box heading into the US session. And we see an engulfment, a three bar engulfment on the doji heading into the US open at the top of the 50 pip box. So again, focusing on 25 pip increments above and below, traders who went long here, if they got in early or, or bought this thinking because we had an engulfment, we were going back up through the high of, of the most recent high or to the double zeros. When this engulfment printed in the opposite direction, you would need to be at break even or close this trade, small loss, break even, whatever it is. When you see this back in the original direction of the move of the original trade short, you must close this trade. And the reason why, obviously, is that this is a trade in the other direction for a measured move down. And again, we talked about measuring profit targets. You can use numbers. You can use highs and lows. This market did two times that range expansion, which again, why it's important to take a one bar loss on any one of these trades. If you are wrong and you're caught in a measured move, this could blow up your trading account. So again, focusing on 25 pip increments, this market gave us a peak formation again third day day one day two day three we've had two days down so Monday day one day two we're expecting possibly day three back to the low the market gives us a peak formation high again more than 25 pips above the numbers but it stop hunted the US session trade closed back inside of the 25 pip increment and immediately pulled back inside of the 50 pip box pinned outside. Now we're thinking 50s and zeros. The market drops down below, pulls back inside of the 50 pip box, heading into the towards the Asian close, gives us a three bar engulfment, goes sideways, and a pin retest in this 25 pip increment box before rolling over and opening up with an open drive candle at Europe inside of the lower 100 pip box for the move back down to the low of the week. And something else I want to show you, again, we talk about um, measured movements. Uh, the, the pound Australian has moved 100, 200, 300, 400 pips down. Um, that's more than three levels of drop. Today, uh, we saw the move off of yesterday's lows, but we see the market struggling to go up above 94.50. We could be in for another retest of the low of the week. Again, tonight, uh, no real major news. Uh, there's OPEC meetings, tomorrow is payrolls. So again, could be an interesting session today for either a move back down to the low of the week, or it may struggle to get through this 9400, 9375 area before retesting the upper box. Uh, this is looking very bearish at the moment, but we'll see how that plays out. Again, point I wanna make today, Focus on your 25 pip increments above and below the round numbers. Um, interesting with the pound New Zealand also again, just to point out, be thinking about this. We see Monday down, Tuesday down, Wednesday down, three days down, but we also see 
one push up into nine uh forty three fifty two pushes into forty three fifty three pushes into forty three fifty and today retesting that and dropping back down so forty three fifty this area up here could be potential resistance so although we see one day two day three down we also see uh one push two push three push four push five pushes into nine uh twenty forty fifty without it breaking through that level again you could also see this retest the low of the week but we also see if you go back to our three levels of rise and drop we see 100 200 300 pips three levels of drop be interesting to see how this plays out today hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders focus on 25 and 50 pip increments above and below your round numbers this is a great example on Tuesday, 25 pips uh, above the double zeros, but we're not at the end of Asia. It moves up another 25, but now we're underneath a 50 for a possible sell. Smaller time frame traders would have sold this up at the numbers or near the numbers. The market made you chase that away if you chased the big candles, but eventually came up, gave us a stop hunt candle and an inside bar underneath the 25 pip increment for the beginning of the move back down below the double zeros to double zero box. Think in terms of double zeros, 50s, plus or minus 25 is our strike zones, and then look for the candle patterns. We wanna see tails up top, tails down on the bottom, or engulfment patterns for the moves back through the numbers. Stay disciplined traders, stay focused, focus on the numbers, stick to the timings, the market opens, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.